Well, this week we're back out at Bishop Hill. We were so intrigued with it last week that we decided to come back again. We're uh, going to go up here and visit with uh, Jim Campbell. Uh, of course, we stopped at the bakery where he and his wife are the owners. And so we're going to go up and see what he has to say. And uh, he's just going to tell us a little bit about uh, their experience here and what they have involved with Bishop Hill. Okay. Well, um, our, our home was built in 1855, and uh, it used to be uh, actually about 15 family units would have lived in, in our home. Uh, Bishop Hill was founded in 1846. That's when the first group of colonists, uh, it was a, a Swedish commune, the first wave of about 400 people you know, that, that came here. And by the time our home was built in 1855, there would have been about 1,200 uh, Swedish immigrants, and uh, they lived communally here. Uh, there, there weren't any cooking facilities or anything inside of our home because uh, everybody ate over at a large brick building uh, just on the other side here that was that fed a thousand people in the ground floor, and and uh, that so. Yeah, some of the elders, after the religious leader uh, was murdered here. <laughs> kind of a um, strange situation for a religious group to have their leader murdered. But, yeah, 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 but uh, it, that would make a really interesting mini-series. Yeah, too long to get yeah. into it here. But, but anyway, some of the elders, you know, the church lived in, in our house, you know, after that. And uh, so anyway, it's just... Uh, so, so now, now you have... Shop. Your wife pretty much runs the shop. And yeah, my wife has yeah and antiques uh, and gifts, handmade gifts in the first floor. She's got a few friends that uh, and between her and her friends uh, that that make different items that she sells, you know, in there. And we have the bakery, you know. Yeah, that's that's one thing I, I definitely wanted to mention that Jim and his family have the bakery over here, and it's very much worth going to see. Yeah, we're in Sweet Annie Primitives, and and. Uh, my wife just has a, you know, a real passion for uh, uh, the site of gardening and that, you know, very much into, you know, antiques and, and uh, um, very uh, decor and, and uh, um, she really would be the one to, you know, give you information about, you know, what, what uh, she does in, in here, but uh, she's got a real eye for... Um, putting things together. Yeah, uh, this is and, very interesting. Well, I think I found the spot I want to paint. Uh, last week I was looking at this uh, small shed or barn, and I think this week I'm going to paint it. I'm also intrigued by that chicken coop over there, and uh, can hear the sounds. I think there's a rooster over there talking to us. Here we see Lee painting in the garden, back of this colony house. Uh, it's uh, Jim and uh, Sherry uh, Campbell's house. We both decided to paint in the garden back here. Let's check on Lee, see what he's doing. Okay, here we are behind Lee. <laughs> He's got his umbrella up, shading his canvas. And my umbrella is strapped to my leg to keep me from blowing away. All right. Let's get a little closer look to see what Lee's doing. Believe it or not, rather than trying to focus on the barn this time, I'm going to be focusing on this weeping cherry out in the yard, but I've got to, at least I think in my mind, I've got to establish that darker background of the red and everything to come back and develop my highlights of the blossoms and the leaves that are just coming out. Part of the difficulty I'm having is I'm using a totally gessoed panel, and I'm finding out that it's more like 
pushing grease around on <laughs> hot metal than anything else here, so it just doesn't have the bite that canvas panel has. Oh, so this experimenting is just causing a little problem. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, that's a challenge, that's what painting is. If it wasn't a challenge, it wouldn't be any fun. Let's get a little tighter. See, he's establishing the reds like he was talking about. We both decided that it's really tough to come up with a red that's barn-like. Maybe we need to get it out of a can somewhere. Now we're going to go to Farm and Fleet and buy a bucket of barn red. <laughs> Okay, here we are checking in to see what Dave has going. Uh, he's been fascinated by this barn too. I think I'm influencing him. He's having some fairly good success <laughs> with that bread though. Oh, I'm trying to kind of contrast the weeping cherry. Cherry, okay. I think. We can't decide what this tree is over here, but a, a weeping cherry and have that just like. Lee's painting, we're doing a similar painting where the contrast between the tree and the red background is kind of making the painting snap a little bit. We're chasing the sunlight. I had the sunlight on the barn on the side here and now the sun has moved a little bit but we still have to maintain uh, the light where we started and, and try and remember where the shadows hit. So really my focus is going to be right in this area looking past the tree and there's going to be a fence line here, and I'm kind of intrigued with the fence line. But uh, the contrast between these two colors of the tree and the barn is what I'm really going for here. 